college, I never really saw myself as somebody who would end up going into consulting. There were plenty of students on campus who were recruiting for consulting interviews, but they all just seemed so intelligent and eloquent and extroverted. And that just wasn't me at the time. And so I was preparing extensively for investment banking recruiting and grinding on the breaking into Wall Street guides, which are really good by the way. But consulting was never in the cards, at least not until I had been working full time for at least a year. haven't really talked too much about is just how big of a role my older brother played in helping me land my current role in consulting. He was instrumental in telling me that, hey, use you know the right resources to prepare, use Victor Cheng, not case in point. And if you want to improve really quickly, then you also have to case with people who work at the firms that you want to work at. So for probably two, three months, I grinded super hard and did about 20 to 30 mock cases with people working at McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. And it was hard and it took a lot of time, but I actually found that I really enjoyed doing these case interviews. And if you like the case interviews, then there's a good chance that you will also enjoy what you're doing on the job. A lot of you have asked me about how I recruited for my current role while working a very intense full-time job in investment banking. And I think it's a valid question. Ultimately though, I think it comes down to what your priorities are. And for me, I was spending a lot of my free time on the weekends when I had less work prepping for these interviews. When it comes to interviewing though, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky. So the dirty little secret is that at any given point in time, probably 50% of your coworkers are either thinking about or actively looking to leave your company. And this is despite the fact that everyone puts on a front and goes to work pretending that everything is fine and that they like their job. But unless you're expecting to spend the next 30 to 40 years of your life at your current company, then that means that at some point you're going to need to interview for another job while you're at your current company. That's just the truth. So I just picked up lunch from Sweetgreen, get a load of that. And uh, it's actually a pretty hectic day today. I'm trying to analyze the results from the survey that we sent out last week. Basically, we got back like thousands of responses and it's been quite a task trying to get through all the data. So I'm actually using Tableau right now, which is a more powerful tool than Excel. And the other reason why today has been super crazy is because we have a client meeting today. And so the team has been scrambling to get things ready for that meeting, which happens in a couple hours this afternoon. But anyways, that's just what I'm working on today. And I'll see you guys in a bit. So when you're interviewing for a job, at some point you're going to have to do an interview in the office or, or at least during the workday because nobody's going to want to interview you after 5 p.m. or on the weekend when you're free. The honest truth, I think, is uh, you have to really just navigate this situation carefully. And what this means is, you know, scheduling calls when you know that you're not going to be having to help your team out or when you're having meetings that require your participation. Because the last thing you want to do is disappear for a few hours when there's an important client meeting at work or your team is like pinging you frantically for help and you're just not responding. 
because that just raises questions and also makes you look bad. Now, the interview process for me personally was relatively smooth because I had a referral from networking with people at the firm. And then when I got the first round, I knew what to expect because I'd spoken with somebody. So there was an online assessment, which I did, and then a behavioral interview. And after that, I moved on to the Super Day round, which was, if I remember correctly, two to three 45 minute case interviews with mid to senior level members of the firm. And then about a week passed and I thought honestly that I had failed and that I hadn't gotten the offer. And I was totally ready to just keep going and keep interviewing elsewhere. But I got a call on a Friday, a week later, and they told me that, hey, you got the offer. So the rest is history. I do want to note that I made it sound like everything worked perfectly in my favor. But the reality is that it only went smoothly when I was interviewing because I'd put in so much time and effort into preparing beforehand. And also because I had failed uh, many, many times before. I think when people say you have to try your best to succeed, I think what you really should be saying is you need to try your best, but you also need to be you know, willing to fail. And so you should be trying your best and failing in order to succeed. The most accomplished people that I know in my life have failed way more times than they've ever succeeded. So I think that's something that the sooner you can internalize, the better off you'll be. But anyways, guys, it's Friday and it's a 6 p.m. and I'm still in the office and I'm ready to get out of here. My girlfriend's waiting for me and I'm about to, we're about to meet up with my sister to go climbing at a gym nearby. So I'm super excited to do that and I'm going to take you guys along this time. Let's go. Hey guys, just got back from climbing and dinner and I think I'm gonna call it a night. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you liked it, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments which part of the video was your favorite. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.